oops wow okay sorry let me adjust it is morning time here you can see my stuff in the background and you can see that I haven't taken my hair out of my night ponytail yet but here's the deal I want to talk to you about a um, article that was written by and published actually by Fast Company and it's 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 old it's like May 2005 I say old because I mean in 2010 I got my executive MBA degree and did some international business projects got to go to Prague got to go to London got to quiz and talk to people that worked in uh, facilities and plants around the globe got to listen to an attorney that was um, in the um, Chamber of Commerce in Prague kudos to that that gave me so much insight so when I first started my executive MBA this always happens to me by the way like there's always I'm always it feels like the least informed or I'm the most courageous with questions so you know like we were talking about the EU and that forum like that summer you know like gathering or whatever and I was you know I was raised on a farm and so yeah some current events but not super into the whole business world even though it's corporate HR so anyway I can remember asking like what is that and you know the people in my cohort were pretty good they didn't laugh at me but you know I felt and I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure like I was the only one of the 12 of us that didn't really know about that and so even though I had exposure to Forex foreign exchange and and lots of things um, I didn't have the linguistics down I didn't have the vernacular down and I certainly didn't have the extensive knowledge to speak intelligently to that anyway in um, this article it is entitled change or die so I'm gonna repeat that if you want to Google it change or die there's photographs in here by Betty images and I'm counting one two three four <clears throat> five and looks like five pages front side only so um, two and two three you know two three pages of, of papers if you print them back back to front okay here we go change or die so I'm actually gonna headline this because I do not think that I can do this quickly <clears throat> but you will get the point change or die what if you were given that choice I'm pretty sure I've read this before uh, for real what if it weren't just the hyperbolic rhetoric that conflates corporate uh, performance with life and death not the overblown exhortation of a rabid boss all of the slick motivational speakers self-dramatizing CEOs leaders and just egomaniacs that's my editorial comment to this article uh, we're talking actual life or death now you own your life or your death gulp this is really hard for me my husband did die by suicide in 2018 and if you knew him you knew he was a highly productive citizen and community member and it sucked um, here we go um, special ed teacher Citizen police officer, rotary volunteer, helping with um, you know marginalized kids, taught kids out of suicide themselves, um, was a coach, little league coach for a lot of boys. Yeah. All right. So not the overblown exhortations of a rabid boss, slick motivational speech, speaker, or self-dramatizing CEO. We're talking actual life and death now. You own your life or death. Um, I don't think you should own your death. By the way, like just. Again, I need to, because of my life experience, I need to make that uber clear. Okay, so well-informed, trustworthy authority figure says you need to change, okay? Do it or die. A lot sooner than you had to. Could you change? Yes, you think? Try again. Yes? You're probably delusional is what this is saying. You wouldn't change. Don't, you know, like, and then this is going to go on to tell you why. Um here are the odds scientifically studied odds uh, again as of May 2005 it, it's it's uh, not pretty here we go nine to one 
that's nine to one against you. How do you like them odds? So there's like a 10%, I mean, less than a 10% chance that you are an outlier in that way. Okay, this revelation unnerved a lot of people in the audience at IBM's Global Innovation Outlook Conference. I might have submitted this to my professor. <laughs> the company's top executives invited the most far-sighted thinkers they knew from around the globe together in New York and proposed solutions to some really big problems and they started with the crisis of healthcare. Huge. We were looking at this when I was back at Dana, when I was centralizing their um, disability function and we saved major bucks just on spend, could never calculate the amount of money we saved majorly on claims. Okay, so again, wellness people. Um, my name is Jamie Thor. I'm all about wellness, Thor Wellness Group. Check me out, but um, stay with me because I wanna gloss over and um, just get to the crux of this article for you. So here's some stats. They started with the crisis in healthcare in an industry that consumes an astonishing, and again, this is old, $1.8 trillion a year in the United States alone, or 15% of the U.S.'s domestic product, gross domestic product, uh, for all of you non-business majors, GDP, gross domestic product, it's like pretty much the pool of money that it takes to run a nation. Okay, a dream team of experts took the stage. You might have expected them to proclaim breathtaking advancements in science, technology, mapping human genomes, um, all kinds of things like that, and that is not what they said. They said that the root cause of health crisis hasn't changed for decades and the medical establishment still couldn't figure out what to do about it. Dr. Ray Levy, um, founder of GMF, which is the Global Medical Forum, an annual summit in the health system, told the audience a relatively small percentage of the population consumes the vast majority of the healthcare budget for disease that are very well known and by and large behavioral. How many of you are taking drugs that you don't need to be taking? Okay, so that is, they're stuck because of how they choose to live their lives, not because the environmental genetic factors beyond their control. Um, Dr. Levy continues, even as far back as when I was in medical schools where he enrolled in Harvard in 55, 1955 was quite a long time before I was born. Many articles demonstrated 80% of the healthcare budget was consumed by five behavioral issues. They didn't bother to name them, but you don't need an MD to guess what he was talking about too much. Smoking, drinking, eating, stress, and not enough exercise. Booyah, right? So the knockout blow was delivered by Edward Miller, the dean of medical school. Let's just keep this all simple baby girls and baby boys out there and don't go into this weird wackadoodle space that there's more than two genders. If you are behind that agenda and I think it's mostly Democrats, you need to see a shrink. Okay, here we go. And I mean that. Um, he turned the, and we should not be messing with our genders for all of you. If, if, if you are one of those um, mangle, um, mad scientist, you know, like you should be locked up, okay? Don't mess with the genders. Okay, he turned to the discussion to patients where heart disease is so severe they have to undergo bypass surgery. Traumatic, expensive procedure can cost more than $100,000 if complications arise. 600,000 people have bypass surgery in the United States every year. That's my cue. I got to get going. I'm going to snooze this. And so, again, this is just like two... Um, I mean, me just breezing through a few paragraphs here. Um, here's some more information. Myth. Crisis is a powerful impetus for change. The reality. 90% of patients who have had coronary bypass do not sustain the changes in the unhealthy lifestyle that worsen their severe heart. So if you're a stubborn ass and you want to be a donkey and you think that you're a goat and you're not going to get down or do what the doctors say, you're probably going to die. Um, myth change. Myth. Change is motivated by fear and reality. It's too easy for people to go into denial of the bad things that might happen to them. 
compelling positive visions of the future are stronger. So that's where hope comes in. Myth, the facts will set us free from reality. What? Myth, the facts will set us free. Reality. Oh yeah, don't yeah, strike with. Okay, here we go. The facts will set us free. The reality. Our thinking is guided by narratives, not facts. When a fact does not fit our conceptual frames, the metaphors we use to make sense of the world, we reject it. Also, change is inspired ugh, best by emotional appeals rather than factual statements. This sounds like the law to me. Myth, um, small gradual changes are always easier to make and sustain. Reality, radical sweeping changes are often easier because they quickly yield benefits. My question on that is how many people will be courageous enough to make a radical change? Okay, myth. We can't change because our brains become hardwired early in life. This is such garbage right here. I was a psych major, um, you know, neuroplasticity. I think there's still a lot of theory going on in the in the neuro space and especially in the psychology space because when you're talking about the actual brain and the um, the the actual anatomy and physiology of it, we um, scientists, I should say, are seeing that they think that this um, area of the brain is, you know, for example, um, if it's removed, it will stop seizures. Or, you know, somebody has a traumatic brain injury and um, what happens is they um, take out a segment of the brain and they lose their speech but then the thing is even though that segment um again anatomically has been removed so i hate to use this word but some form of lobotomy has occurred people can still learn that's how mysterious our brain is so we can't map it very well but thank god the psychologist and the neurologist are starting to talk together check out stanford check out my dude my dude um what's his name um huberman he's got a cool lab okay um myth we can't change because our brains become hardwired early in life reality our brains have extraordinarily extraordinary unbelievable plasticity meaning we can continue to learn complex new things throughout our lives assuming we truly stay active and engaged so get safe be engaged. <sighs> See if you can get some love and then you'll feel loving. Sell it. That's all I got for now. I'm wrapping up. Um, maybe next time I'll hit some of the other diagrams and or framing that's going on in this article. Like I said, if you want to check it out, um, probably need to look up and Google Fast Company May 2005, change or die. So God bless you good. Um, mwah. Take care. Bye. Oh, check me out at Thor Wellness Group. And I also obviously have a YouTube channel. You need to search Jamie at Thor Wellness Group on YouTube if you want to find more of my content and videos. And um, I would like some feedback. If you could please engage with my content so that I can see that um, I am reaching people. That is why. So um, thank you. I appreciate you listening to me. And um, like I said, have a good day. I could throw a scripture or two at you, but I'm not gonna. So, um, but just know I'm praying for you. Thanks. Bye.